So I'm Ike. I um, just wanted to uh, give a short, yeah, maybe cautionary tale about my adventures using OSC to control Ardour with a MIDI keyboard. Um, so starting with the culprit or why I'm doing this, um, I wanted to have a MIDI keyboard capable of aftertouch for a long time and then I saw that uh, those things are on sale. This is a Native Instruments complete control keyboard. Um, and well, this, the normal selling point for those is those have MIDI controls and two displays and Native Instruments has this software integration where they um, basically allow you to control various um, audio generation plugins, uh, software, DAWs directly from your device. So you can just, uh, well, it, it, uh, you get no distractions. You don't have to switch f from uh, your MIDI keyboard to your computer when you're doing audio stuff. That's the normal selling point. Um, the selling point for me for this device was that somebody already reverse engineered this one. Um, so, of course, they only support software they care about, which basically means proprietary software. And when we have the reverse engineer protocol, maybe you can do stuff ourselves with that. So that's the setup. Um, Previous efforts for reverse uh, engineering can be found by the uh, project named QControl. Um, basically, what you can do is over USB, you configure the MIDI part of this device, then it speaks MIDI by itself. Uh, you have um, some buttons here. Um, you have these buttons which do MIDI stuff. Um, mod wheel, pitch wheel, and there's also a touch strip mod thing and the point is um, all the other buttons on this device are just USB HID devices so it's like a USB keyboard basically and the display just accepts image data. Um, this means all the logic that Native Instruments builds is contained in their driver which means the protocol it speaks to the keyboard over USB is pretty simple, so we can actually reverse engineer it and build ourselves, uh, ourselves our own stuff with it. So this is the idea. That's what I wanted to do. And um, yeah, write a simple program that uh, can do stuff with the keyboard. So for a first demo, um, I've so uh, I've started some project and I have well, well this this project Q control allows you to configure the MIDI part of the keyboard um, on host PC software. I wrote a simple tool that um, renders a GUI on the keyboard itself, so you can configure this on the keyboard itself. Um, what I have is this debug window, which basically uh, for now, ignore Arduino in the background. We will need this for the later demo. Um, the debug window just uh, basically mirrors what is um, shown on the display on the device itself. So um, maybe I can just sort of lift the keyboard up so you can see better. Um, like this, I think. Oh, it stands up on itself. Uh, on its own anyway. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> so, basically I have this setup screen where you can um, uh, configure the MIDI functions. Yeah, I mean you can uh, configure MIDI channels and all the other features this uh, MIDI keyboard brings with itself. So I can change the color of the uh, key LEDs and all these uh, um, playground stuff, basically. And so, yeah, um, uh, just a simple uh, config screen for this keyboard so you can configure it on the keyboard itself. So 
to reiterate, all this software, all this logic runs on my computer and it just sends display data to the keyboard and reads the button inputs. So, then next step, okay, Native Instruments has this cool software that you can control your DAW from it. And I want that too. But of course for software that I use, which is mostly open source software, so I want to control Ardua. Um, that's what I tried. And then you look into it, how can you control Ardua? Well, there's uh, a lot of control surfaces, as they are called in Ardua. Uh, you can do MIDI, there are some proprietary protocols. But I want a more or less simple protocol. I wanted features, so that disqualifies MIDI. Um, and yeah, open source, so the, I, I don't know, it, it supports a Mackey protocol and I think there's a Presonus protocol and uh, some others. Um, but uh, for this uh, feature set, okay, let's use OSC. Um, what is OSC? Uh, hands up, who knows what OSC is? That is not, not everyone, okay. Um, basically, for some time, people went around uh, calling it uh, MIDI 2.0, um, which is at least since three years outdated because the MIDI Association actually uh, published MIDI 2.0, so MIDI 2.0 is MIDI 2.0 and OSC is OSC. Um, but the, the feature set somehow diverges. So what you get from OSC is um, more data types. So you, for example, you have strings. Yeah? Um, your DAW can uh, communicate to your device like the session name or the name of a track or something like this, so, which you can't do really great over MIDI. Um, there are more control channels, if you will. Um, OSC actually uses a path structure, so like uh, files on a Linux system, um, where basically for every path you have an endpoint and you can take any you like, so you're pretty much unlimited in the number of things you can control. And you have timestamping, which is actually really nice, so you can, um, for example, send a whole pack of messages in uh, one go, tell them this, uh, these messages are to be executed um, at some point in the future, and then the whole bundle of things you want to change, for example, 10, 20 uh, parameters of your synthesizer plugin, uh, the whole software can do at once. So in a single time step, which is for some applications really useful. And although, owing to the fact that OSC uses um, these path-like structures for their control endpoints, it uses more data. It usually also is run on um, Ethernet, IP, usually on UDP. Um, so in most cases, you have more bandwidth available. So um, in the net, you mostly gain um, available bandwidth. Um, the problem with uh, OSC is there is no really a given usage standard. There, there have been plans to propose something, but this hasn't really seen widespread adoption, which um, I think this may be what actually um, stops OSC from being adopted quite uh, um, far. Um, I think uh, Niels actually phrased this like, um, OSC is like MIDI but only SysX, so there are no standardized endpoints you can uh, send messages to. And, um, well, owing to that, basically you have to configure every client that you use with every other software that you use. There, there, there's no standard in the, par, in the um, control endpoints you use. Um, also, there are limitations on uh, every client, like uh, you can do something like, for a specific endpoint, send multiple parameters. So what Ardua, basically, uh, for example, does, um, it has a, an endpoint that says, okay, um, set the volume level of a single track. And it accepts the number of the track in the list and the volume level you want to set it to. 
But a lot of software only supports one parameter per endpoint. So what Ardua also supports is that you can say like um, set um, the audio channel uh, for endpoint endpoint number uh, for track number something in addition to the general endpoint. And uh, this doubles, um, of course you have to send the data back in the same way, and this doubles all um, the code, which makes it, uh, um, it's, it seems like at least a mild pain to support OSC in the wild. So, uh, we are hoping that uh, this um, uh, standard for uh, naming um, paths gains more adoption. But we are so uh, far in time now that th this also breaks obviously uh, old conventions. So old conventions of every single software that uses OSC. So widespread adoption in the near future seems unlikely. Um, so. Uh, things you can do with OSC and um, Ardua is, well, you can get session names, you can read out the tracks, you can listen for value changes, so um, you get feedback from that. You can send volumes, set volumes of tracks, you can change plugin parameters, um, you can start, stop recording, you can um, uh, walk through the time, you can seek in the time frame. Um, so you can actually do pretty... Uh, pretty many of things. And what I started with was, yeah, at least take the mixer standpoint. So changing volume controls of uh, an Ardo session. And this is my test session. This is just a mostly empty Ardo project um, with just 10 empty audio tracks. And if I go to my keyboard and change into the Ardo screen, I have a representation of all these mixer strips and I can just, uh, yeah, more or less, just turn these knobs and uh, watch the faders move in Ardua. Uh, yeah, you see, this, <laughs> this works actually pretty nice, and it, it also has the back channel, so um, I should be able to, if my mouse works, ah, see? Uh, I can change the volumes in Ardua itself, and it updates this on the device GUI. So, I mean, this works. So, what, what I, am I complaining about? Well, the problem is when you are querying Ardua, um, at the start you have to specify what data you're interested in. And um, the first so, so the initial state is what gets sent to you when you query for the first time, all in one go. This is for this session with 10 empty tracks and only regarding this audio data, around uh, 1,100 messages, which net to about 400 kilobyte of net data. Uh, then you have to add headers. And what I learned is that by default on a Linux system, and I did a survey about systems I had access to, this is pretty much the um, adopted standard. By default you have a maximum of 200 kilobytes of network buffer data, which these 1,100 messages actually managed to fill up. It's 40 kilobyte of net data. This is just UDP package contents, okay, plus, plus, and package plus metadata headers, this is what fills up the buffers, so you get the 200 uh, kilobyte of buffer overflow. And so even um, when I'm sending this data just on my machine from one process to the another, um, this buffer fills up, Linux drops the rest of the packets, and I have packet loss. So. Um, some messages don't get, get delivered. And I mean, this is the uh, old um, thing with real-time data. You say, OK, we, we need uh, low latency. So most of the time, we can't really, um, it makes no sense to send data again if it didn't receive it, which is OK, I mean, fine. Uh, 
if you have real-time data like, um, I don't know, what you get in this case is, for example, level meters in, in Ardua for every track. If, you, uh, if one of those packets drops, it's not a deal. You, you'll get one, I don't know, a tenth of a second later, and this is just GUI. The user will see the new value. There's not really much lost. But when, I don't know, you delete a track in Ardua, um, and your device doesn't get this, that's a problem. And this is a desync that just stays there. And th there is really nothing you can do about that. You can just keep querying every second, so it fixes itself finally after a second or something. Um, but, uh, yeah. Another thing is, okay, what I have done here, which is why this demo just worked, um, you can increase the buffer size. Uh, this is my last slide. Uh, you can increase the buffer side, size, which is not really user-friendly because that's a kernel parameter. You need root privilege to do that. Um, you can use a simpler interface, okay. Um, uh, let Ardua manage the data, so you can tell Ardua to just send you only a subset of strips, but this is not really what I want. I want to have reliable data and as much as I can get so I can um, somehow work it into the GUI. Um, so, in consequence, probably OSC is the wrong tool for the job um, in this case, because it just does not have reliable um, message delivery. Um, there may be workarounds you can do in the protocol to design it better, but uh, that's not my job to do, basically. Um, so, yeah, this is just the cautionary tale um, of what things can go wrong when using OSC. So be mindful of that if you do that. I mean, you have the same things on um, MIDI. Basically, you could lose MIDI messages. It all depends on the amount of data you send. So there are the reasons why it works for MIDI quite well, but yeah. Um, so in conclusion, um, this is my demo code. I uh, posted it to GitHub if anyone is interested. There is also... Um, documentation of the reverse, reverse engineering um, or the messages on the USB side and because I don't ha really have um, any uh, useful demos um, one thing I can show you is uh, for a final demo at least Knight Rider on the uh, above display buttons <laughs> and of course Knight Rider on the keyboard LEDs and Knight Rider on the touch strip. <laughs> and of course, Knight Rider on the display. Thank you. <laughs>